Hi there, I am Vlad and I'm a portrait photographer. I like to emulate film in my photos and one of the really important aspects of emulating film is film grain. Because on actual film, your photos are gonna be made out of the grain. It's actually silver halides, but I don't wanna teach chemistry here. We're talking about photography. So let's focus on how grain behaves on actual film and then how we can replicate that in our digital files. Emulating film, it's a bit like making pizza, and that's why I'm gonna start with a bit of flour. This is going to be my film grain, and like flour, film grain is completely organic, and that means that the shape of the grain particles are not gonna be square the same way that they are when we're applying digital noise, and that's rule number one. Grain and film are not the same thing. Grain, like my flour over here, is organic. And that means that the shape of the particles is gonna be organic and random. Also, they're not gonna be perfectly the same size. While digital noise is gonna be just a bunch of equally sized squares displayed in a grid. So you cannot use digital noise to emulate film grain. And going back to the pizza analogy, you also need water. In this case, it's light. You need light in order to form a picture on your film. So I'm gonna add light and my film is gonna retain an image. But let's take a closer look at that. While I'm drawing with my finger in the flower, I'm actually moving around flower particles. And a similar thing happens to the grain in our film. When it's exposed to light, grain is moving around in the film in order to retain the image. And that creates zones with different densities. And after a few chemical baths, we end up having zones with a higher grain density, that's gonna be our midtones and highlights and zones with lower density of grain, which are going to be our shadows in the final image. And I know this is already getting kinda complicated, but trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg and I have to go through the little details in order to motivate the choices that I'm gonna be making in the second part of the video, where I'm gonna show you how to emulate film inside of Lightroom that is gonna look way more realistic than just pulling on the grain slider. But now let's go back into the itty bitty tiny details and how grain should actually look before we jump into Lightroom. Because on film, the photos are made out of grain and the grain is less denser in shadow areas, this means that the darker the tone goes in our images, the less details we're gonna be able to retain because we have less particles that are actually retaining the image. But there's an effect on the highlights as well. In the highlights, because the grain particles are so much denser, we're not going to be able to observe the grain as well, especially in the really focused areas where the film retained a ton of details. So grain is gonna be more apparent in the midtones and shadows even though in the shadows is a lot less denser, but our eyes are gonna have an easier time perceiving it because there is not much details in that area of the photo. And speaking of the details, because on actual film the thing that retains the details is the particles that are making up the grain, there shouldn't be any details in our photo that are smaller than a particle of grain. And as we're trying to simulate film with higher and higher ISO, the grain particle should get bigger and there should be less details apparent in our photos. And finally, there's one more thing. Colored photos should have colorful grain. We can do that inside of Lightroom, and I'm gonna pretend that's not a thing for the rest of our video, because what I'm trying to do today is emulate film grain inside of Lightroom. And speaking of Lightroom, let's jump into it. And in here, first I wanna demonstrate how much of a difference it makes to add the right amount of grain and to do it properly to a photo that's already been edited because this is what this shot looked when I took it and this is a final edit without the grain. And now I'm going to apply my all-in-one grain preset for a pretty high ISO value of 1600. And immediately you can see that I'm starting to lose details in the photo, especially in the beard area compared to what I had before, because the grain particles are really big. But overall, the mood and the feel of the photo completely change because you're not seeing all the little details from the digital file. Again, this is the photo without any kind of grain, and this is what it looks when I apply 
quite a heavy amount of grain. But let's not lie to ourselves because this photo was already primed for film grain. I edited the photo in a specific way to simulate film colors and the mood that you would get if you shot on film in the studio. Let's not pretend that just by adding film grain to a digital photo, it will instantly make it look like film. It's just one of the many steps that will make your photos look amazing if it's done right. Let's do this one more time with a photo that was taken outside. And here I want you to focus on these highlights over here which look really sharp and I are really distracting. And also we're gonna take a look at the details on the face. I'm going to apply my all-in-one grain preset at ISO 400, which is more suited for an outdoorsy shot like this one where I had plenty of light. And now let's see before and after. Here is what the photo looked like and how sharp the highlights were. And this is with the grain preset applied. You can see that the photo feels a lot softer and if we zoom in in the skin, you can see that the grain, because it's pretty rough, it's covering up some of the skin imperfections that were visible in the initial photo. Also, we're losing a bit of sharpness, but we're emulating film and that's totally okay because our goal is not a perfectly sharp digital photo. But enough chatting about my Lightroom grain presets, because if you want that, you would be on my website and you're watching this video to learn how to do this yourself. But first, I have to also show you how the Lightroom slider for grain works and what are its limitations when applied to a photo. Let's take this photo as an example. It has a really strong contrast, deep shadows and bright highlights. So if we add a ton of grain to it, we should see that there should be more grain in our midtones and highlights than it is in our shadows. And in the shadows, the grain is super apparent. And the same goes for the rest of our image, because the usual Lightroom slider applies a uniform amount of grain across the entire photo. And we can see that even better if we apply a liberal amount of grain to this grayscale test pattern. We can observe that a uh, pure black or pure white, there is no amount of grain whatsoever. And we're going to talk about that later on. And we can also observe that the grain is super uniform across the entire black and white spectrum, except maybe for the last two or three per percentages over here and over here, where the grain is less apparent, at least to my eye. But I do have to give kudos to the Lightroom team because when you increase the amount and the size pretty high, the photo underneath gets a bit blurred and that simulates really well the loss of details that goes along with grain that has big particles. But I'm also going to note that this behavior breaks down if we're applying a small amount of grain with a larger size. And this way you can get details in the photo that are much smaller than the grain particle because the amount slider in Lightroom acts like an opacity slider and the size is basically scaling up or down the overlay of grain that's applied on top of the photo. So if you're applying a small amount with a large size and maybe higher roughness, you can end up with photos that have some resemblance of grain on top of them, but they still retain the very high sharpness of digital files that's now overlaid with some blurry mess of a grain overlay. So if you don't pay attention and don't keep these two sliders pretty close together, you can mess up your photos pretty good with the Lightroom grain sliders. And that's not all. Inside of Lightroom, you can also add grain using a mask. And I'm gonna use the radial gradient for this demonstration and add a ton of grain to it. Also, my size is set pretty high, so we can see in the mask what's happening. If we zoom in even more, we can immediately see how grain is applied on top of our image, which remains super sharp. And in the edge of the mask over here, you can see that the photo underneath the grain overlay or the grain mask in this situation is as sharp as the photo where I have no grain applied to the image. This is bad because grain should be the smallest visible detail in the photo. And if strands of hair are way smaller than the grain, the photo is gonna look like a bad film emulation. But the really awesome part is that we can combine mask 
with the global sliders to get a more accurate grain representation than we would get with each of them separately. And to do that, I'm gonna start by creating three luminosity based masks inside of Lightroom. The first one is gonna be for our shadows. And while I'm gonna click on the darkest part of the image, I'm still going to edit the range a bit to make it rather smaller, something like this. And this is gonna be our mask for the shadows and I'm gonna name it accordingly. Next up, I'm going to duplicate this one and create one for our highlights, which is gonna be exactly opposite of this one, something like this. It's pretty much covering me in this photo. And then I'm gonna rename this grain highlights. And we need one more mask for our midtones. In this case, I'm gonna click over here. This is not a midtone and I'm gonna manually tweak it so the mask is covering pretty much our midtones in this image. And I'm gonna rename this one as well, Grain Midtones. I'm not gonna jump directly into masking and I'm gonna assume that this photo was taken at ISO 400 on film, maybe something like Portra 400, because if we want a realistic looking film emulation, we need to think about what kind of film we wanna emulate that would be realistic to use for this type of photo. And with this photo being shot in the shadows, 400 would be probably plausible. And for ISO 400, we want our grain particles to be rather big. So I'm setting the size to something around 45, let's say, and the grain to uh, 30 something. That looks kind of small to my eye. So I'm going to increase the roughness a bit as well but nothing too spectacular and I want to add just enough grain so it looks like it's not enough because I'm going to use the luminosity based mask that I just created to add a bit more to each zone in order to create that differentiation between the grain density in the zones. But at the same time, because of the way Lightroom works, I'm using the global grain slider to lose some of the sharpness in my file so the small details don't go through the grain and look really fake in my final photo. So while I'm tweaking the grain amount over here, I'm making sure that the size and amount slider stay pretty close together and the fact that I'm covering up enough of the details for the grain to look realistic. Now going back to the mask that I set up earlier, I'm going to add a bit of grain in the shadows, but a really small amount, a bit more grain in my highlights. I'm gonna stop at something like 10 or 15 and quite a significant amount in my midtones. Of course, these values will have to be fine tuned later on, but we can already see how the grain is much more uh, visible in our midtones and less visible in our shadows. The best example in this photo is this area over here, where you can see that in the deeper shadows, there is obviously less grain than it is in the nearby bushes. And since I already have the mask for the different zones, let's also drop the clarity and the texture a bit in our shadows and while we're here, I'm also going to decrease the sharpness and I'm going to do a similar thing in my midtones, but with a way smaller amount because, you know, there should be more grain in our midtones than in our shadows. And that means a bit more details. And in our highlights, I'm not going to touch the clarity slider because that's going to make the highlights look washed out. Instead, I'm just going to lower the texture a tiny bit and I'm going to actually increase the sharpness by just a bit. This way, I'm getting more details in our highlights, like film does, and I'm also reducing the sharpness of my midtones and my shadows exactly like film actually behaves. And now let's check our final results. I'm gonna zoom in into my beard and look at the small hairs to see if they appear to be smaller than my particles of grain. And this doesn't seem to be the case, and overall, my image looks pretty organic. And finally, if you feel that the grain looks a bit too rough, I would advise you to go on the other side of 50 with this slider. Basically, if you go above 50 on the roughness slider, you're gonna get grain that is more 
apparent and more contrasty. But if you go to something like 45, 46, you're gonna get grain that's a lot smoother and it appears to be a bit softer in the final image. That's personal preference and I prefer mine on the rougher side. But this slider over here doesn't actually go from 0 to 100 and should be looked at as a slider that has its zero value at 50 and it goes for softer grain on the left and harsher grain on the right. And if you wanna take this entire technique to the next level, you can go in your luminosity base mask and play with the dehaze slider as well as this will create another kind of bloom to your images but and again you would do it more prominently in the shadows and midtones than you would in your highlights but keep in mind that if you push the dehaze slider a bit too much to the left you're gonna start to add light into your shadows or whatever mask you're playing with and you'll have to compensate for it with the exposure slider that's just the cherry on top and i already did the hard balancing act to make it look good with my all-in-one grain presets that you can find on my website the grain presets come in six flavors six yeah six flavors starting with iso 100 and going up to iso 3200 it's done like that so you would have an easier time understanding how much grain you're adding to your photo but it's not necessarily simulating that exact film sensitivity so you can play around and see what fits your style better and for those five people who are patient enough to watch me ramble about grain for what i guess is gonna be roughly 20 minutes i have a bonus tip if you go into your masking panel and create a linear gradient going from top to bottom across the entire image something like this and you add around half a stop of exposure to that linear gradient it's gonna make your photos look way more readable and more natural looking it's probably because sunlight comes from above and we're used to light coming from top to bottom of our images but I found that if I do this to most of my outdoor portraits, they immediately look a bit better. I'm not sure this is applying to any other kinds of photos, but outside portraits and outdoors photos in general, it's a great tip. Try it out in your own photos and let me know how that worked in the comments down below. But anyway, that was it for today. Thank you for watching and YouTube thinks that you should probably watch this video next. Bye.